Hey guys. Oh, hey doggo. Hey, good boy. <sighs> so, after another week at working at Remote Location Redacted, I am home for a couple of days. Um, yeah, stuff's been happening. Um, those of you that haven't been keeping up with what's been going on in the Second Amendment, um, yeah, the uh, the Alphabet Boys at the ATF are up to their old tricks again with uh, pistol braces. Um, I'm not going to sit here and break in, break down the entire thing for you. Um, I recommend you go over to the AK Guys channel, Brandon Herrera. He just posted a video two days ago. Um, I highly recommend you uh, watch that video. Uh, he goes into a, an emergency, emergency, uh, well, I don't know, alert for no better term. Um, and uh, breaks it down for you in a little bit more detail than you're going to get from most places. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're, uh, oh boy, I'm just uh, beside myself actually right now. I'm kind of, I'm not an AR guy. I mean, you know, I'm building the AKR 39, uh, which is, yeah, things have slowed down a little bit because I've been working remotely, um, at, uh, location redacted in state redacted, um, and trying to buy a house right now, which I mean, we're in the underwriting phase, but that's neither here nor there. That's not what this video is about. This video is just to update you guys on what I've been doing and uh, get a little gun cleaning in because i got to clean my carry guns because uh, I don't have a chance to do it because I'm staying at a uh, extended stay place while I'm in location redacted. So, um, so we'll get some cozy gun cleaning in and uh, we'll talk a little bit. Uh, so yeah, uh, long story short, they're trying to... No, no new rules or laws have been passed. They are trying to get, basically the gist of it is, is the, the new ruling on pistol braces that they're trying to pass because it's a proposed notice, a notice for proposed rulemaking, which means you guys can uh, write to the ATF at their website and uh, voice your opinion. Please don't be an asshole or it will not be uh, even looked at. So uh, try and be concise, clear, and respectful, as much as you can be respectful for places that like to shoot dogs. Um, but uh, they're trying to rewrite the rules to the point where, long story short, if you have an existing pistol brace, they're going to turn you into a felon. Um, that's the boiled down version of the law. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dry. It's a hot one here in location redacted. Um, I think it hit 96 today, but the feel like was like 112. It's stupid. Um, so yeah, uh, go to their site at the ATF. Comment on the notice for proposed rule making of pistol braces and uh, express your opinion in a respectful way. Moving on to other news, uh, SHOT Show's coming up, uh, so I'm I'm clearly not going to go there, because I'm not, I'm a small fish in a big pond when it comes to gun tubers, but I will tell you that multiple other gun tubers are going to go there, and I, well, for those of you that don't follow those guys, I will, uh, I'll give you the long and short of it, uh, from what I gather from them and also other sources. And um, we'll talk about the cool stuff when it happens. Um, but uh, in the meantime, I've got to clean this gun because it is a mess. It, you know, I've talked about this in cold weather carry and warm weather carry. Yeah, you sweat, things just get nasty. Uh, I didn't find, I haven't, I haven't shot this thing in a while, actually, to be fair. I haven't had time to go to the range. Maybe next weekend. I don't know. I can't promise anything because I'm uh, probably going to have to go look at the house again uh, once they get done uh, with the recommended repairs that I suggested. Um, but, uh, oh, 
would sure like to go throw some lead down range. Um, speaking of throwing lead down range, uh, prices are starting to climb, go down again. Uh, I noticed availability in this particular state in the near southwest. Um, prices are holding pretty steady. Um, no jumps. And uh, if anything, they've come down a couple of bucks a bo for a box of 50. And you can find deals online still if you know where to look. Uh, I still highly recommend uh, Palmetto State. I've been shooting steel case, 9mm um, from uh, Croatia, Czechoslovakia, something like that. Um, it's Barnall. Um, I haven't had any problem with steel case stuff. Plus, you can't. I, <clears throat> there's no point in shooting brass because you can't get any reloading supplies right now. Still, um, although now that Remington's back online, and that that happened a couple weeks ago, I haven't had a chance to even talk about that. Now that Remington's back online and making ammo, prices are going to be steadily going down. Actually, with uh, the new uh, Agilia factory. No, not Gilia. Fioki factory coming online in Arkansas. So, and they're all they're going to produce is five, five, six, nine. You know the common stuff that people are really wanting right now. And then, then they're going to open up into full production. So that'll be nice. Um, what else is going on? Let's see. I talked about the notice proposals, rule making. Um, a uh, new shipment of uh, um, Balkan and, Ru and Russian ammo is it, it hit another wave of it hit here in the United States. So there's plenty of ammo to go around. It's not like it was two years ago as far as prices, but prices are coming down. Um, what else? Uh, that's really all that's been going on. I just wanted to touch base with you guys more than anything. I know I know I really backed off on the amount of content. Um and I apologize for that, but wow, just this new new gig I'm I've got going on for one of the other alphabet boys. Um I just been so fucking busy. Uh what else? Um Oh yeah, I've been carrying the 380 because it's summertime. We're clear. Um, so maybe we'll talk about that a little bit in this video. Let me set this aside. Because I've been carrying it too. Um, we have not really talked about this 380. Um, other than that video I did a long while ago about do real men carry 380s. Um, this is kind of an interesting little piece. It's from Remington. Um, and it's not the most robust gun in the whole world. But it's beefy. Um, I've done some upgrades to it. It's good. This is factory, by the way, this red. Um, only thing I did was put some glow in the dark paint on the, on the blade. So it makes it a little easier to pick up because it was red painted too. So it kind of all blended in. It's a hammer fired. And like I said, I showed you it's clear, uh, hammer fired. Um, Is it the beefiest and most robust and most accurate gun in the whole world? No, but it's a 380, so you're not going to be using it very far away from you. And I carry uh, some spicy uh, plus P uh, 380 ammo in here. I think that's... What brand is that? Oh, it's Federal. Um, I think it's this punch, I believe. Uh, no, it's HS, HST. I don't have any punch 380. Um, just added. That's the factory mag. Yeah, that's the factory mag. Um, this is the backup, which I put actually a finger a finger extension from a car car uh, 380. Doesn't quite fit right, but I mean, I need all the help you can get with this thing. Especially since I'm shooting plus P out of it. Um, carry it on this little Technic clip. Which is a neat little thing. I think I've talked to you guys about this. It clips in your belt. Clips in your, like, your pocket. So it looks like a clip for a 
you know, pocket knife, so nobody knows. This isn't, but yeah, this is a neat little gun. I mean, would I, would I go out of my way to buy another one of these? Probably not. But it, first off, the breakdown is really weird on it. See this little hole right here? It's in, in the slide. You have to slide this and line it up with a little pin that's in there. So you have to hold it just so. Knock that pin loose. And if you put too much grease on it, like I did, you have to poke it out of there with... Oh, this guy will work. Keep it lined up. Push that pin loose. Oh boy, I just dropped that. One second, guys. Okay, let's set that right there. All right, let's get, uh, ah, here we go. We'll push it out with an Allen wrench because I have a set of those sitting right here. Let's see. So anyway, yeah, line up the pin. This is funny. <laughs> I'm in trouble taking apart this little 380. Push that pin through. There we go. That guy right there. And then slides right off. So, and of course, you guys know me. I can't leave well enough alone. So, the whole thing just pops out like this. We installed stainless steel guide rod on this guy. It had, it just had a steel guide rod. So, a little thicker, a little beefier stainless steel guide rod to add a little weight to the front of this gun. With some heavy, these are nested, nested recoil springs. These are chrome silicon, so better quality recoil springs than what the factory ones were. A little guy, a big guy. Standard barrel, um, lock up, locks up against this surface right here. You can barely see the cut recess cut in there. That's your lock up surface. So this surface locks up inside this lip, right? Right there. It's you know, bell mount, stip, typical short barrel, think car, and you're not going to be too far away. I think car used, no, wasn't car. Another company made this, and then Remington bought them out. I can't think of the name of the company now, but this is a design from another company. Uh, not car. Boy, it's going to bug me. I should have researched this before I did this. Um... I, I remember researching it after I picked up the gun. Uh, but I can't. The name escapes me. It wasn't a big name company. Oh, boy. Why does Boberg stick in my... I don't think that's a Boberg design. No, it's not a Boberg design. Maybe somebody that worked for Boberg. Eh, it could be. But anyway, they borrowed this design off of somebody else. Or appropriated it. Through legal terms. Um... Typical, you know, hammer fired. There's your hammer. There's your firing pin right there. Just a little guy. I put a uh, beefier firing pin in there in spring, of course, also for reliability. Because let's be honest, a lot of these guns made nowadays, mass produced, aren't using, they're built with okay product or quality products, but there's better on the market and I have no problem spending a little more extra money on it and to make a gun even more reliable. I think total, my total output on this entire gun was you know, 300 bucks after the upgrades and a decent, decent, uh, holster. But, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a good little gun to carry. Um, one thing I wish I would, there's better panels, grip panels you can get for these. Um, and I had, I, I repainted the tops of the heads with another layer of a, enamel 
to protect him from sweat. Um, but otherwise, this has been a good little gun. I mean, oh, am I a big advocate for 3.8? No. Is there, you know, better, better a gun than no gun. That's how I look at it for one. And if I can do it for cheap, I mean, yeah, would I rather carry a bodyguard or, uh, Oh, like one of those little SIG 938s or 238s? Oh, heck yeah. But I'm not going to spend that kind of money for a self-defense gun in this day and age. If you do have to use said gun for self-defense, it's going to get confiscated and sit in an evidence locker for God knows how long. So why not use the cheapest and most cheapest and cheapest gun that you can use reliably? Yeah, that's why I just don't get these guys you know, carrying, you know, 226s or 229s full dress and then end up having to use it and uh, it disappear for three three years or more if, if, if they ever get it back at all. <coughs> Damn allergies. Mm. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to carry my high-end guns. Lord knows I'm not going to carry my SIGs out there. Not, not in this political environment. No, sir. So, yeah. I'm just doing a little gun cleaning. Doing a little chatting. Trying to keep it cozy. Let's see. This little guy. Just nest right there. Click it. And that hooks up on that surface right there it's got a big area to ride all right and this guy it's simple just to cut just a just a bar nothing fancy no safety on this gun um, I did lighten up the trigger pull a little bit um, because the trigger pull is horrible from factory on there so I uh I lightened it a little with respect with respect to trigger pull and it's a lot smoother too I did some polishing of course um a drop of oil right there on that pivot point Drop oil there on those trivet points. And this is this is some what brand? Yeah, just uh these this is that. Those of you that watch my videos, um no, I I again I'm a big advocate on the slip two thousand stuff. Um for my uh, videos on gun loops and uh for my carry guns. Cause I clean them every week. I'm just going to go ahead and use up the uh, pro shot products that I had. Um, um, you know, bought them out of my own pocket to do some range testing with them. And I, I don't, I didn't hate these pro shot products, but the slip 2000, which is better. So I'm going to reserve the slip 2000 stuff for my comp guns. And, uh, of course keep it for the, uh, AK 39. Click. All right, so this drops together. I really wish this gun was a little more user friendly to tear apart and clean. It's actually easy to clean. It's a pain in the ass to take apart. But yeah, this pin is what holds. It's a pivot point for your barrel, and it also holds the slide on the frame. So. Remember that hole? That hole right there? That's your pivot point. And it's also, you line it up with that hole in the frame. So you slip this together. Once everything lines up. Helps if you hold the barrel 
online. Come on. Just everything has to be lined up just perfect with this gun or it will not go back together. Kind of a pain. Yeah, it's there's a reason why not a lot of people bought this gun. But I got a really good deal on it, so I wasn't about to pass it up. Because I needed an additional carry piece. That I could it's small enough I can use this as a backup piece. Which I have. Do, do, drop in, there we go. Now you push it through the rest of the way, and there your slide slam shut, and that's done. Work that oil and that grease in there. Wipe her off. And to answer everybody's question, because it doesn't have a safety, no, I do not carry one with one in the chamber. The G2C, yes, I do, but safety. So that's done. Let's go ahead and put this bat, bat boy back together. All right. And yes, I have done more work to this. Polished the feed ramp to make it a little more self-defense round friendly, although I do use the Corbon for the win. Corbon. So, lube the bell. That is your mating surface. And your pivot point on the end of your barrel when you rack it. So we drop our squirrel daddy in here. Okay. Take a little lube and put on your locking surface for your frame right there. Just a little. Because that surface right there that I just lube locks up right there on that lip and so a little bit of a little bit of grease will make it last longer because we're we clean for performance and reliability you lube for reliability so a little grease right there on your rails You saw me put a couple drops on the bearing surfaces and rotational bits already. Another little bit of grease on your back rails. You don't need a lot back here. Because a lot of it's just going to get wiped off right quick. But. See, grease is already starting to smear off. But there's. So we'll lock it open, you take that grease, and you just wipe it on the, your rail grooves, wipe off our hands, drop the slide, you work that grease in, spread it around, and uh, like I said, I carry this gun almost every day. Except for what's stupid hot like it is the past couple days and I've been carrying a 380 because it just prints less because I'm wearing shorts. Um, but why am I wearing jeans? This is the guy on my hip. And my uh, Brownells Alumahide paint job on the slide is holding up great. I mean, look at that. That's two coats of Alumahide dark gray parkerization over a cleaned and touched up factory finish you know just a little bit of holster wear marks that I've covered up with some cold blue or super blue from Birchwood Casey um, and it's it's holding up great just did some black fill in on that 
on the Taurus and then the G2C 9mm right there. A little bit of black on the factory serial numbers that I'm going to cover up because I'm showing this on the internet. Um, and yeah, this, 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 I hate, I used to make so much fun of these guys, but I love, I love this thing. This is a great carry gun, 12 plus one, um, right now with the factory mag, the two factory mags that I have, you know, got the Fox grip, one little grip on the uh, piece on that. And of course I've got it on the handle and then, uh, nothing on that. And if you've noticed the black tape on there, that is for this because it reduces walk. There's nothing against Taurus because a lot of polymer pistols have this problem. They're, they're all injection molded and there's a certain amount of flex and play in this polymer as it sets up from the factory. So no two, no two or three are going to feel exactly the same. This particular gun has a, ha, without the, without that, if I push it in there before, see how much walk there is right there? With that one little piece of black, t uh, of electrical tape, there's just a minimal amount of walk. Is it going to affect the gun performance? No. Does it bug me a little bit? Yes. So that's why there's some super heavy duty uh, 3M, I can't remember the number from 3M electrical tape, which I happen to use in my profession a lot. Um, and yeah. These are the factory 12s. I have used the SIG uh, 226 mags with a sleeve on it. I don't happen to have them because I think I've already got all that stuff packed up. So it's 15 round as opposed to 12 rounds. So, you know, three more rounds will be. Uh, what my biggest complaint about that is it, that tends to, I mean, it's, you're going to be sticking out about like that. And with that sleeve on here, um, spacer, I should say, not a sleeve. I noticed that with the 15 round mags, the gun will print the way I carry it. I carry it just on my hip. About about a four o'clock position, about three thirty four o'clock, and it with the fifteen rounds it tends to print a little bit. So I generally don't use those except for when I go to the range. But anyway, one in the chamber as God intended it. Put the whoops, got a little grease on my fingers. And yes, these are one hundred and fifteen grain. Yeah, 115? These are 115 plus P core bonds. Um, I swear by these for self-defense. Um, so, solid cop, solid spun copper that will fragment upon entering soft tissue. Uh, they mushroom and then fragment. So, yeah. And yeah, safety's on. And put it back in the case so it goes in my luggage when I go back. And no, I'm not flying with it in my luggage. I drive to remote location redacted. And that sits on my nightstand when I'm not carrying it. So anyway, nice long chat while I cleaned two guns and talked a little bit about two-way stuff. Um, Todd's been posting some re recent videos, um, uh, doing shotgun stuff. Nice, good, nice job, Todd. Um, really, I don't have any cool reviews or anything coming up. I'm, I'm kind of all in trying to get this house bought and a new job. This rotating days and nights, every 30 days is wearing on me. Now I'm in a 30 day cycle right now on nights. Um, but as soon as I get back to days, and we get moved after the house is bought. Look for me to start ramping up on uh, the AK-39. AKR-39, I'm sorry. Jeez, I'm tired. Um, what else? We talk talking more long gun stuff coming up soon. I know I 
probably going to look at a lever gun soon. Um, my, my dad's getting a new mayor's leg. And I might see if I can borrow that off of him and do a video. Probably July 4th weekend when we go up and see him. I might shoot a quick video up there. Uh, plus playing around with that. I mean, if everything works out... We're looking at probably the end of July for the AKR-39 to be all the parts in-house and complete. And uh, potentially maybe a range video with that. Um, at once, once I get the kinks worked out of it, all the bits. Because you know I'm going to have to do some adjusting after I drop that new complete upper from Bear Creek on there. Um, I'm going to try and get the side charger. It's going to be sweet. Um, plus it comes with its own bolt carrier. So now I have a spare bolt carrier group. So who knows? Maybe I'll build another one. And, uh, yeah, that's about the size of it. Um, be careful. Um, keep an eye out, eyes and ears open when it comes to new rulemaking stuff coming down because the pistol braces are just to start. So... That being said, uh, y'all be careful, y'all be safe, and keep your powder dry, folks. I'll talk to you soon.